It's about uh, ad finance media, so commercial television is financed by advertisements, mm -hmm. and that gives you various uh, causes for concern in how well markets do in providing uh, programming types for consumers. Mm -hmm. So normally in economics we have this idea of consumer sovereignty, which is that people, you know, they, they vote with their dollars, the things that they like, uh, they go out and buy and then firms go out and produce them. Consumer sovereignty is this idea, therefore, that the market provides what people want with their votes being expressed through their, through their dollar spendings. Right? And so with the, the media, you've got a, a bit of a disconnect because you've got what we call a two-sided market. Uh, and the two sides are the, the advertisers and the people watching the programs. And the idea is that the advertisers want to communicate with uh, prospective consumers, so they want to talk to these guys. Uh, and the viewers aren't necessarily interested in the ads, so they're not turning on just to see ads for Coca-Cola. They're maybe more, they're interested in the programming, so they want to see Desperate Housewives or the newest reality show, something like that. So that, that's why you have this sort of unusual structure where you have these two sides and they're intermediated, if you like. You know, how are they brought together? It's by the television companies, or the, or the radio station, or, or it could be magazine, or the internet has this business model as well. Right? So the idea is that people, the, the consumers, uh, switch on for entertainment or, or, or news sources or whatever, but while they're watching that, they get exposed to the ads. So you've got this sort of indirect effect there. And who's, who's ultimately paying the bill? It's the, uh, it's the advertisers. The advertisers end up paying for the programming content. But the programming is the bait, if you like. That's the, the conduit for getting the eyeballs to the advertisements, right? So while you're watching, so or after you're watching something else, you're going to see the ads, and then the, advertise, the advertiser pays for that. So what that, that means is there's sometimes some market failures there. Sometimes the market doesn't perform as well as it ought to. Uh, because, for example, there's some demographics that aren't well catered to that aren't, they're not well catered to because the advertisers don't find them very uh, useful. I mean, what, what is highly desirable is 20-somethings, uh, especially yuppies, uh, males apparently, even more than, uh, those are the most important demographics to get because their tastes are just forming, they're just, you know, coming into money and they're going to, you know, if you buy the first car as a Ford, maybe you'll stay with that, or you open the bank account of the Bank of America, so it's very important to talk with her. The little old lady, on the other hand, she's already decided what she does. Uh, she's not going to be swayed to change her behavior by ads. So if there's something like, you know, I say, like a nature program or something that little old ladies like, then uh, the market's not going to care about that. They're going to care about, you know, what delivers the, uh, yupp the yuppies, the 20-somethings, the guys with the money, and they're going to have the money. And that's, going to, that's why we have all these reality shows. We have things like Friends, that is, because people relate to the program they're watching, they relate to the characters. So Friends is a cast of, oh, <laughs> yuppies living in New York. And so guess what? That's just the demographic that is watching that, of course. And it's provided because the advertisers want to talk to those guys. It's a, it's a great thing to go into, yes. And, and you're quite right, it's good you picked up on that. There's, uh, well, well, first of all, we had sort of a theoretical, conceptual, uh, new uh, market structure to look at with this two-sided market. So the theory guys are interested in that. Um, then there's, you alluded to political economy. I mean, we worry about media bias with Berlusconi and Rupert Murdoch. Uh, other cases, right? So you, you can worry about, so, so yeah, it's not just about advertisers talking to viewers, also this is the news source for many people and you will worry if you have somebody like Berlusconi who is actually controlling a large amount of the airtime that uh, people see so he can uh, influence the vote. So there's both theoretical work on that and a lot of empirical stuff. Right. No, so the empirical side is also uh, sort of showing a lot of the patterns in the data. Uh, 
one of uh, Waldfogel's hypotheses has to do with preference externalities. That if you have a, a, news, a newspaper will sort of cater to its largest uh, market base and therefore uh, not worry so much or not give much coverage to minority issues because the mainstream readers are maybe not so interested in Hispanic voting or something like that. So all those things are up in the air. Yes, good topics to get into. First of all, there's a lot of things happening, a lot of change happening. The internet, as you say. Newspapers are just going to the wall all over the world, so, uh, and or going online. So a lot of changes. Uh, DVRs, for example, fast forwarding, so people don't see ads. That's going to wreck the business model if people don't consume the ads, because then the advertisers aren't going to pay for the programming. Um, the internet also, well, a lot of new business models there. So you. Uh, firms come up with new things like Hotwire or Groupon or something. So these are just new ideas by these wonderful business minds and now, oh, the economists think, well, okay, let's think about how do we model that and can we, uh, can we estimate our model of what's going on in these new ways of organizing business. So all those new ideas on the web are great for industrial organization people like me <laughs> because then you've got all these new things to try and explain and think whether they do they need regulating, uh, are they going in the right direction, um, what's going to happen in the future. So yes, anything which changing a lot has got to be really interesting. Well, the two-sided market per se can be very tightly monopolized or very tight oligopoly. In the case like credit cards, that's a two-sided market because people holding the cards care about how many merchants carry it and the, number, and the merchants care about how many people have the card in their wallet. So that, again, we have two sides mm -hmm. intermediated there by, uh, by credit card issuers. And if you think about this, so Visa, Mastercard, you know, pretty tight oligop an American, but pretty tight oligopoly, in that case. But it doesn't, ha or a local newspaper as well. Often there's just one local newspaper, so a lot of market power there. Uh, on the other hand, it doesn't have to be like that. So with the internet, maybe you might argue there's a lot of diversity of voices, free access of people putting blogs up. So you you, you run the whole gamut from a lot of competition to very tight markets. I think what I'm doing is the most important. <laughs> 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 so now the sort of answer is if I knew that I would be doing it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I, literally the thing I'm doing today is thinking about the way we thought about the model so far, we've missed out some crucial aspects which have to do with firms actually competing for advertisers more. And so I've started looking at that and bringing them in, but I'd like to ultimately think about so try to measure relative power on the both sides of the market. So how easy it is to compete for viewers and how easy it is to get advertisers to switch channels. And the, the market outcome should depend on those, you know, the relative weights there. But I haven't yet formalized in a very nice tractable way how to do that. So that's still out there. All right, there's a good question. <laughs> I've got little toy models of it, but nothing that's really sort of the definitive statement of that yet. Well, I guess there's the political economy side and the media bias side, and if you, you, you might worry about developing, developing economies don't have uh, much diversity of viewpoint, so they're susceptible to being hijacked uh, by the, the press, etc. Yes, so the, the markets can fail in various dimensions, but we also see market response. to We see government response to that. We saw the, the BBC or mm -hmm. PBS or NPR. Uh, a lot of public broadcasting stations can sort of fill the gaps that the private companies aren't providing. So the little old lady gets her nature program because it's on, the, on PBS or something mm -hmm. like that. Right? So there's one reflection. The other one would be, uh, yeah, things are changing. Things that technology, you mentioned that before as well. Technology has changed so that now, in addition to free to air commercial broadcasting, you also have pay television. 
and so things like HBO and Showtime and all these. So. <laughs> That's what you watch. <laughs> so yeah. So now you don't have to rely on advertisers trying to wanting to talk to you. Now you can go out and buy it yourself. So now we got right. So if you really like sports programming, you're going to buy that package, mm -hmm. and that brings back the consumer sovereignty. Uh, I guess you still have this sort of tyran tyranny of the majority problem that uh, the, the sort of mainstream largest tastes are going to dictate what is shown, at least if you have limited channel numbers. But now we have many channels, even that sort of, uh, you know, we can cater more to diverse preferences when people are paying for what they want. Um, and we're not advertising finance anymore. So you've got choice now. Funnily and paradoxically, I don't actually watch television. <laughs> I don't watch much of it. Although when I see it, then I'm transfixed by it because I don't normally I keep it out of the home because I think I'd watch it too much.